Alright guys, you'll have to work with me here. This is the first time I've recorded a video for YouTube, so not sure if it's going to be too quiet or too dark. Just let me know if you can't see anything, and I can try to take another video and see if I can show you what you guys need. Um, so today I'm just going to be going over my crude uh, Polar Star Scorpion and how I put everything together. Uh, be a quick video. Uh, if you guys have any questions about how I did anything, uh, just leave a comment. I'll be happy to answer them as I can. This is going to be the first revision. I plan on uh, perfecting the design and making it a bit more professional because this is very uh, not very good looking, and it is it's functional, but it could it could it could be improved. So first off, as you can see. Um, it's just an AEP Scorpion. This is a, I believe this was a JG. It could have been a well. I don't know. Uh, I got a box of about five of them, and I just started hacking on a few, and this is what I, end up, I ended up with. I have the FCU and the battery storage in the bottom. Uh, it does require a mini FCU without the screen and a very, very small battery. Uh, I have a 300 mAh battery, and it's actually a little too big, so I'm going to try to have to find some 250s or maybe... Dremel out the inside of the grip some more because there's there's not very much room in there as you can see. Um, so one of the biggest issues that I had some people uh, comment on was that this doesn't have a stock. And yes, uh, unfortunately, due to the size of the Polar Star Jack and how far back it sits in this current revision of the design, the solenoid and the line actually stick out of the back more than the uh, more than the normal body would allow so I had to kind of dremel out and drill the back as you can see this is how a normal back would look it's just one solid piece and the stock would go right here as it's mounted here I may work on a design for some sort of riser to go back here so the stock can be added on or possibly look at moving the jack forward in the body. But as of now, it's just going to have to not have a stock. So the takedown is still the same for a normal uh, Scorpion. Just pop the pin out and uh, slide the receivers apart. So I had to do a completely custom uh, wire harness, I guess you could say, uh, by myself. I was not able to use any of the Polar Star Jack trigger boards for this. I had to just wire everything up because I'm still using the stock trigger contacts and the stock trigger because obviously none of the trigger boards that they make are going to be anywhere close to fitting in this. That being said, unfortunately due to that fact and the fact that I was not able to keep the uh, AEP gearbox in, I was not able to salvage and use the uh, uh, selector for this revision of the design. Uh, so there is no safety, unfortunately, and it is semi, and the way you initiate full auto is I actually put a flashlight pressure switch on top that is run back up in here, through here, uh, down to the trigger board. So when you press this, it just goes into full auto or three arm burst or whatever you have it set to. Uh, so that's this connector, and these are just micro deans, just so I can take it apart easy, because as I work on the gun, I have to take it apart and put it back together quite a few times. Uh, this one right here, you can see it. This one is uh, just for the solenoid on the jack, and then the rest of the the rest of the wiring is just routed up up through the pistol grip, and then either. Uh, wired onto the contacts, the trigger contacts down in here, or is wired to one of these. Uh, if the camera's not showing it too well, there'll be some pictures of this in the write-up I do on Airsoft Society. So this is actually some work mat foam that I put in here to help shim the jack unit up, up inside the gun, because this is where part of the gearbox would normally sit, the bottom of it with the motor right down here. 
And the issue is, is that without something there, the jack would just kind of sag as you see it is now. It's, it's sagging a little bit inside the body. So to prevent that, I needed something that would shim it up tight to the top of the uh, Scorpion, but I didn't want it to be super tight. It had to be able to compress so it could fit perfectly and so it would help keep the jack pressure fitted inside so it wouldn't pull out the back of the body because when you're using a gun and you're connected to an airline, obviously you're going to have some tug and play on it so you don't want it to slide out. But yeah, it's just literally two pieces of uh, old work mat foam just cut to basically size and just shoved in there. I uh, didn't modify the magazine catch area at all. That's totally stock. It ended up working just great. So how I uh, so one of the, the one of the other ways that I was able to secure the jack inside the top of the body is I actually use little pieces of wooden dowel right here and right here. Uh, I drilled holes in the upper receiver where the uh, inserts for the normal gearbox cylinder head nubs would go. And I just drilled the hole right through the receiver and then just cut little pieces of wooden dowel that would go through to give the jack another point of uh, se being secured to the upper receiver so it wouldn't slide out. And then the receiver is actually a little... If you notice when I slide it out, the receiver flexes a little bit. That's because there's two little tabs here that conveniently also help keep the jack in place. So it's actually quite well secured once everything is stapled down. So obviously, again, the jacket wasn't going to be centered when I put it in the gun for the hop-up. So I had to use something to shim it from the top down as well. And for this, I didn't use foam because it wouldn't be precise. What I decided to use is shims because I needed a longer, a, a specialized size shim, I guess. I actually just took some hotel room key cards or credit cards or whatever and uh cut them into long pieces and then just epoxy them together it's i think five or six of them and then i just painted the top black because uh a little bit of it sticks out right here and you don't you don't want to obviously tell that you have a bunch of cut up credit card in your gun when you're using it so just to make it look a little nicer and then as you see here i just have the full auto switch run through the top of the receiver between the uh, shims and the top of the jack unit. Uh, also, I am using a number seven nozzle, I believe, right now. Um, I don't remember exactly which one, but uh, I'll probably be cutting the nozzle down to size because it's a little long. It doesn't matter that it's long because it fits, but I would like it just to be perfectly sized. So. The hop-up is actually the part that I've been having the most difficulty with uh, with this build. Everything else has been relatively simple comparatively. Uh, as of now, I'm still having issues with hooking with the BBs hooking to the right and having a lot of hop apply issues. Right now, I actually don't even have the hop-up arm in the hop-up. It's literally just empty with the bucking because even without the hop-up arm, uh, I still get a little too much hop on two fives, which is what I'd like to use. I have to use uh, three twos with the hop up arm in and a little bit of hop to get a, a flat trajectory. Uh, it also has issues where it hooks to the right quite a bit. And if you see right here, this is uh, this little plate on the hop up is meant to help stabilize it inside the receiver of the gun and against the front of the gun. And if you notice on the little arm right here, I've actually cut more pieces of a hotel key card and glued them on to shim it a bit more because, again, I'm trying to pressure the hop up to the correct spot where it won't uh, hook to the right. It's helping. It isn't hooking as much. It's usable a uh, decent amount. Uh, it's definitely usable indoors with uh, point threes and up, but... If I want to use it with two fives, I'm definitely going to have to shim it some more. Uh, the range is like 130 before it becomes kind of inaccurate. The BBs go about 200 feet right now, and I'm getting 310 FPS with .32s, but it's not that accurate, and I wanted this to be quite accurate. Uh, as you can see, 
when I when I'm using the hop up arm though, still it's probably going to be pretty hard to tell on the camera. But this is the normal hop up. Yeah, it's not going to focus, is it? The one in my left hand is the normal hop up arm, and the one in the yeah, it's not going to show. Oh, there we go. The one in the left is the normal hop up arm, and the one in the right's the uh, or the one in the left's the sanded down one, and the one in the right's the normal one. Uh, I had to sand basically the entire piece down to be able to uh, get it to not over hop even point three twos, but even then I just had to take the entire arm out for it to not over hop uh, three two or two fives. And then, as you can see, the reason I'm not using an AEG barrel actually is because with AEP barrels, they have a notch cut in the top that the AEG barrel doesn't. That uh, helps the, the barrel lock. This isn't just a stabilizer. This is a barrel lock as well, I forgot to say. It, uh, it helps stabilize the barrel, and then the side cuts on the AEP barrel are a lot farther back than the AEG barrel. So... I'll probably have to do some more modification to be able to fit an AEG barrel. Um, that will come later on and in the next revision probably. I'll work on fitting longer AEG or just better quality AEG barrels because this is obviously just a stock really crappy brass barrel that doesn't even have any crowning. I'll, I'll probably polish and crown this at some point down the road when I have time. And then the AEP buckings are actually totally different than AEG buckings. Uh, there, this is an AEG bucking, obviously, and this is the AEP bucking. This is just a stock one. Uh, the lips on the AEP bucking are way more assessed. So if you try to use one of these without setting the lips down or some modification, you're going to get pinch jams. Uh, I use this basically get pinch jams every single time. Uh, fired two or three rounds, and then it would jam. And then obviously, this is you have to cut this down way to the end as well because uh, the barrel locking device won't go on because there'll be too much too much bucking space. Uh, the bucking is also a lot thicker and the hop-up nub is slightly more assessed on this than these so probably can't just use a normal you can't just use a normal AG bucking. Um, I may try at a later date to recess the nub or recess the feed lips on this and flat hop it uh, that might help with the overhop issues. We'll see. Uh, but that's that's for a, for the next uh, revision. Other than that, I don't think there's anything else that I haven't gone over. Um, I hope you enjoyed my little overview of how I put together my Polar Star Scorpion. And any comments or questions or ideas for improving the design are more than welcome.